Uh, DHCP, okay? When you have DHCP to configure, um, just hope that you have to configure it on iOS. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. Because the UCM DHCP server is very flaky. Uh, it's not something that I would want to configure ever in production. Um, I've never actually seen it configured in production, although some students that come through say, yeah, you know, I had a client or a customer that, that actually wanted to use CUCM DHCP server. Um, at which point I said, make sure you steer them away from that. <laughs> um, but really, you know, what it is is in the lab, they want you to be familiar with all the different call manager and Cisco type products, so the HCP is just one of them, okay? The reason why it's so flaky, well, I don't really know the reason why, but I know that, you know, if you decide to, you know, put the configuration on, you know, on the interface, not the interface, but CUCM itself, the subnet, the actual server configuration. I've seen it dish out wrong IP addresses. I've seen it not even assign addresses at all. I've seen it assign the correct address, but not some of the parameters. Um, it really does have some issues, okay? The way that I always avoid those issues, though, is to simply first, as a first step, shut down the IP DHCP monitor service, okay? When I have to configure CUCM DHCP, that will always be the first step, okay? Then, at that point, I go and do the configuration, the, the server configuration and the subnet configuration, okay? I say that that's probably the best way to attack it because if for some reason you, you assign these, this information first and you, and you have the DHCP monitor service running, it can get confused. That's what I've noticed anyway, okay? You may have um, a stroke of luck with it if you forget to do the DHCP monitor service, but to make sure 100% of the time it's working, shut that service down. Okay, after the configuration, of course, bring it back up. You don't want to miss that, okay? It's all configured under server. Um, the two very common things that people like to miss here um, are the default gateway and the TFTP servers, okay? Your default gateway is very important because that's the method of communication that you have on layer three to get out of the network. And then the TFTP servers, of course, is gonna be where you get the configuration from CUCM. Okay, so if we don't have TFTP servers in there, your phone doesn't get configuration, it doesn't register, you're pulling your hair out, you're wondering why you spent hours on phone registration, um, it, it happens, guys. Uh, it's definitely something that you can run into. I hope, I hope that you don't, and if, if you do run into it, I hope that it's here in the classroom uh, rather than in the lab, okay? Definitely this is the best environment to run into issues so you can work through troubleshooting them, okay? Um, the iOS DHCP server, like I said, if you have that, that's the best thing, okay? Because it's, it's more reliable, it actually works all the time. You can see that addresses were assigned. That's one thing out of CUCM is you, you actually can't, can't see when they assign IP addresses, okay? Or if one has been assigned. Uh, you just have to guess and say, well, yeah, I guess it was. My phone got an IP address, that must mean CUCM gave it to me. Um, iOS, you can actually see what IP addresses have been dished out, okay? Uh, we also have this, this command here, the IP helper address. And that's if your, uh, your phones exist in a different network than your DHCP server. Because what happens then is, is your phones actually send out a broadcast request, say, hey, is there any DHCP server out there, right? The DHCP server then will respond if it is out there, but if it's not, then you have to forward that request on to a different VLAN, okay, or a different network. Now, let me, let me kind of go through that here a little bit. Now, we've got R1, for example, and we know already that our phones are on a different subnet than our servers. So we know we're gonna need that in some fashion if we're gonna use CUCM. All right, so we'll have our CUCM DHCP server over here. Okay. And that's gonna be 0, 0 0.13. And our phones essentially are connected off of 0, 0 0.11, right? So down here we've got our phone. All right, so first of all, the, the phone sends out that broadcast For DHCP it says hey is there any server out there okay and of course there's not right now on the land so on this port this 00.11 port we have to have the helper address okay that helper address is going to port uh, point to a specific place and that's going to be some unicast IP address like 10.10.13.11 for example that's our HQ publisher server so if that's the case, this request comes in from the phone, comes into the interface, and says, ah, I need to go to this helper address here. So then it goes back to CUCM, CUCM that says, ah, I have information for that subnet, I can assign an IP address in that subnet, okay? 
and then the request actually comes back across the router and of course goes to the phone. Okay, so the helper address is, is necessary there uh, for phones that are on different subnets, of course. Okay. All right. Now here's some here's the configuration for the CCM DHCP server. What this actually looks like. Um, you can see we've got the server selected here, uh, 10.8.93.12, and the subnet IP address is 10.8.91.0. We've also got a range identified here. Uh, it's dot 40 through dot 49. So 10 IP addresses can be assigned there. Now, um, it's, it's important to actually obviously match the range that they give you in the lab. They may give you a specific range, they may not. Um, but it's important to probably always specify a range to avoid uh, the use of IP addresses elsewhere. For example, in our lab, if we have the Q module, um, it's going to be 10, 10, 31, 254 is the IP address for that. If we had a subnet on call manager, that was serving out IP addresses for site C, we would say 10.10.31.0 slash 24. Right, that would be the subnet. If we didn't specify a range, the first address that would be assigned by CUCM would be the address that would be corresponding to Q, the unit express module at 10.10.31.254, because CUCM assigns the last IP address in the range first. Okay? Just to make it more confusing. Why not? Okay? So you no you'll notice that when you do the configuration. Um, but most of the time you're not going to have your Q module configured yet. So you'll see that you actually assign 31.254 somewhere and then when you go to a, configure your Q module, now you have a duplicate IP address on the network somewhere. Okay? So that's a, that's a problem obviously. So that's one of the reasons why you want to lock down that range to make sure that you're never going to step on any other IP addresses. Okay? Even if they don't specify a range, it's always a good idea to lock it down. Okay? Now, uh, one of the things that most people miss, I, I've definitely missed it before, is this primary router IPv4 address, okay? As you go through and do the configuration, kind of speed through it, it doesn't have the asterisk next to it, okay? So it's really easy to miss. So when you go through and, and see that uh, you, you know, you've got your subnet start and, start and end address, you've got your subnet mask, you've got your TFTP servers, you entered all that stuff in there, kind of makes sense, and you come back and you're like, oh man, I forgot my default router. Right, the, the symptoms of that, of course, would be you don't get an IP address, or I mean, you, I'm sorry, you do get an IP address, but you can't communicate. So that's really kind of challenging, right? Because you don't really think of the first thing that, that could be the problem is that you misconfigured something. You think, oh, there's got to be something wrong in the, in the network, right? I, I can't communicate. Well, if you forget your default router, then you can't communicate anywhere. Your phone will not register, okay? Very easy to miss, the primary router IPv4 address here, okay? So let me just show you real quick too where this is actually located. We log into my HQ call manager. <clears throat> okay. So this is the menu system, of course. <clears throat> How I would like to configure things most of the time is going to be <clears throat> this top down, left to right fashion, right going across the menus. Um, of course, we're living in the system menu here for this one, system DHCP and server. <clears throat> so under here, we've got our DHCP server configured, and you can see we've got some configuration options here. TFTP server, IP address lease and renewal time. Of course, I've, I've actually loaded the configuration that you have for your lab this week, um, so we can kind of step through some of those if we need to. <clears throat> but you can see we've got configuration here on the server page, and if we go to the subnet page and click on one of the subnets that we're, that we're serving, just HQ in this case, we can see we actually have some of that information repeated. Here on the subnet, I don't even have the TFTP servers defined because that's because that's they've already been defined in the, in the server page. Okay, So it's a hierarchical, hierarchical configuration. So let me not use red. <laughs> Our server configuration in CUCM is basically the parent to the subnet configuration. Okay, this is how a lot of things are done in call manager. That's why I'm focusing on this right now, because this is you're going to see this methodology repeated through different menu systems. So the server is the first top-level object, and you can apply you know different properties within that object. Okay, then the subnet, as you configure that, you have maybe the same properties, right? But you could overwrite properties in the subnet with this option, right? Because it's more specific, okay? 
more specific. The reason why they do that, right, is, is so you can have maybe default or global settings and then override that with specific site settings you know, that you might have for different sites, okay? Um, this is going to be repeated throughout Call Manager, okay? This is how they do things. It's a parent-child relationship with most things, just as any database really would be, okay? Because it's really, in, all in all, it's a database that you're configuring and their front end is just called Call Manager, right? So the server configuration must be done first and then the subnet after that. Now before that, of course, I talked about the IP DHCP monitor service. Let me just show you where that's at too so we don't lose anybody on that. It's under serviceability. See, I went to that menu and you go to tools, service, activation, and select one of the servers here. We'll, we'll pick the pub. And we've got the Cisco DHCP monitor service. Okay, that's on the publisher. That's now disabled. And on the subscriber server, that is enabled, okay? So the service has been activated over here. Obviously that makes sense, but before the configuration, you wanna uncheck that box, save it, and then go do your configuration, come back and re-enable it, of course, okay? So wanna make sure you guys knew where that one was at. Definitely a useful menu there. You wanna go in and make sure your services are activated and the, and the first thing you do anyway. Um, once you do your, your configuration, your DHCP uh, subnet, Get all the configuration in here, your range, your subnet IP address, your primary router IP before address. Um, since this is configured on call manager, we do need that helper address. Okay, that's gonna be on our R1 device. And remember what subinterface this is gonna be on. It's gonna be our gig 00.11, because that's our phone subinterface. So sure run int gig 00.11. Okay, we've got our IP helper address here, which is pointing directly towards the subscriber. So any requests are going to be forwarded to the sub, and of course that's what we have active. We have the sub active for DHCP, okay? So, let's move back to the slides here and show you a little bit about iOS now. Now, iOS DHCP server, like I said, is, is the one that you want to have. Um, we, we can configure it with this IP DHCP pool command, site, or this SC is just a descriptive name, any name you want. Uh, we've got a network here, 10.8.97.0 slash 24. You don't actually have to type the mask out. You can actually type slash 24 for it if you want or whatever the bits are of the mask. Uh, default router, of course, and option 150. Uh, so you can point to the correct default router and point to the configuration server, either call manager or CUCME, whatever that happens to be. Um, before you actually configure the pool, it is a great idea to first issue these excluded address commands, okay? Because think about what happens, right? We, we've got the excluded address command maybe not entered and I first enter my DHCP pool, I enter the IP address, now my phone has got an IP address maybe 10.8.97.2 because one was taken. It tries to go out and ping the IP address first. If it's taken, it'll assign the next address. Okay, so maybe 10.8.97.2. Well, maybe the question wanted you to assign 10.8.97.10, right, to this phone or whatever. So at that point, you're wrong because <laughs> it wants to have that specific IP address. Now, the way that we would have to resolve that, unfortunately, is go and put the excluded address commands in there, right, to make sure that it does get the right IP address. But then you'd have to reset the phone, reset the network configuration. Sometimes these phones are really sticky. They're, they like to hold on to their IP address for dear life. Um, you might have to clear the IP DHCP binding. Um, so it could be a problem for you, essentially, is what I'm saying. Is, 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 is a, it's a time waster if you forget the excluded address command. So try not to forget that. Try to remember that's the first thing you should do when you do iOS DHCP. Um, excluded address, even if you don't have a specific range, make sure there's a specific range defined so that way you know where your phone's address is going to be assigned, okay?